Okay, I'd like to call the North Coosh Area Sanitation District meeting to order, 7.32. First off, let's do a roll call. Mike Brutt. Here. Here. Thompson. Here. 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 Bob Anderson here. Terry Murray here. Okay. Audience who we have here. Can we usually do that though. The audience. Yeah. Okay, we have a city administrator. Yes, good morning. Hello there. Good morning. There's Clancy with the uh, Schnapp with the uh, I guess you're just representing yourself, huh? <laughs> and then we have Darcy Sullivan. All right. Any additions or deletions to the agenda? Well, Mr. Chairman, a point of order on the minutes. Uh, the August 15 minutes or whatever, there's, there's no basis for a uh, for minutes. We had a quorum and I was advised to record minutes. Uh, the, but it wasn't a North Cooch meeting. But we had a quorum of North Cooch members. Well, there was a quorum and that was noticed properly for to make sure that the uh, public knew that there was going to be a meeting and that there could be a quorum there, but there was no intent to take any action, and it wasn't a North Cooch meeting, it was a city with the International Falls meeting. With a North um, Cooch quorum present, and I was advised both by Mr. Overstar and the League of Minnesota Cities to take minutes at that meeting because of a quorum being present. It, I still don't understand, it was a city of International Falls, called by the city of International Falls? Yep. And but the board members representing City of International Falls were explicitly invited. Yes. Yes. Okay. But and the rest of us weren't invited. It was noticed because of the open meeting law, because there could be a quorum there. It was noticed as the open meeting law. Not. Yeah. Yeah. Not that there was going to be any action by. North yeah. Beach, and there was no action or of any type, so. I think we're kind of tiptoeing along the edges of it there because us other members were not specific, but were specifically disinvited, I believe. So Not, not uh, disinvited, uh, it was open to the public. Don? If you had all your board members, the City of International Falls board members at that meeting, would it, would that constitute a meeting of International Falls? No. It yeah. wouldn't? Uh, well, if the City of International Falls called a meeting to share information with, with the representatives. And if you had all your board members, the City of International Falls had all our board members at that meeting, that would constitute a meeting of International Falls. I'm not sure of the definition of meeting of International Falls. We need a quorum <clears throat> for our sewer district, you mean? Because it's six people of the eight were there? Yep. Well, five, I don't know if there was five. Six, five, five. Yeah. Yeah. Majority. That was, yeah, there was definitely a quorum uh, and it was walking a, as I was told by Mr. Oldestar, I think it was that it's walking a fine line for uh, not having a actual meeting uh, because, to, especially, you know, there's a lot of information that was given out, and for two of our members not to have seen that, you know, really puts them at a disadvantage if we're going to start voting for anything that we talked about. And that, that, I understand. Yep. I, yep. Even though it was for this, right, right. I understand your guys' concern. Yep. There was no action taken. No. I take it. But there was testimony. I mean, there was other sure. people involved in giving testimony in the meeting. Yes. Yeah. Well, I understand. I understand your concern. Well, then, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, City Administrator, you noticed the meeting, and where did the uh, 
notices were posted? Um, my staff posted on a day that I wasn't present. We posted them at City Hall, the library, I believe. Uh, um, one was sent over here and then also at the county courthouse. Mr. Chairman, just for a point of information, uh, as city administrator, if I'm aware of a gathering of any kind where there's potentially a quorum of the city council, I typically would post a notice um, in City Hall indicating that there's a possible quorum of the city council going to be present. Could be when uh, Representative Nolan would be here in office, it may be at a chamber event, but um, I also disclose in the notice that there's going to be no official business taken of the city council and that accordingly we don't take minutes at those meetings. So that would be our standard procedure at, at uh, the City of International Falls. And we've had it happen that when we do have community meetings, we have included minutes in the past. Okay, if this wasn't a committee meeting. No, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't think there's any legal ramifications here unless somebody pulls us into a lawsuit somehow. I mean, nobody's going to complain about this kind of thing, I don't think. Okay, I think but concerns, it's not are, good. Raised. Yeah. concerns are raised, they'll, you know, put our, put our thoughts into it. But any, any additions or deletions to the agenda? Cindy, so when we had that meeting, did you bill uh, North Pooch for your hours when you were there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Mr. Chair, I would, I would move that we would delete the August 15 minutes. From the agenda. I think those minutes are important for those that haven't seen what was discussed. If we were all there, or at least invited to be there, I think, I think that possibly it's it's it wouldn't be uh, needed here today but i think it's good that they see this i don't think there's anything that we're hiding no nope. unless there was I something just unless just there was something wrong why we would take official action on them because it was not a meeting of north Kuchin. consider it a flying eye just like these coochman has done Second or no? I'll move that we consider the August 15th, 2018 uh, city meeting as an FYI. Okay. We get a second. Well, we still had a motion from Bob, though, right. initially. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. We're yeah. right. I'm sorry. Right. Second. The motion was made by Bob to delete the minutes from the agenda. From the agenda. So a no vote would be to leave it in the record? Let's have a second. Let's have a second first before we discuss Oh, I thought that uh, we Bob. did have a second. No. Oh, okay. I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Rudd. Discussion. Then a no vote would be to leave it in the record. Yes. Okay. If we delete that, The information that was given at that meeting is not of a, not to Rainier or East Cooch. And further on the agenda, we've got uh, a resolution from the City of International Falls. <laughs> what is? I guess what the motion is <laughs> that we're not going to discuss this or make any movement on it today. It's not well, going to be an official. Well, I, I think it is relevant to the official meeting. No. I, I think it's the same as the motion that Mr. Blair made was that it's an FYI. Yeah. The same as the East Coochie Chain is an FYI. No, we don't those take are any two action. different motions. One is to delete and then remove it. Delete from it from the agenda. That was my motion. Well, why can't we leave it on as an FYI then? That's what Steve is saying. If we delete it from the agenda, then it's no longer part of the record of this meeting. That's correct. But Steve's saying, let's leave it as part of the meeting, but only as an FYI. Okay, we have a... Doesn't hurt. Motion. I would add that to my, my motion, that leave it as an FYI. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, second. 
Yeah. I second it. Yeah, he seconded it already, yes. Yeah. With the amendment. Mm -hmm. No, this one. Yeah, to show it. Show to leave it as an FYI. FYI. Yeah. Okay. What amendment now? To leave it as an FYI. Bob amended it. Not to strike it, but to leave it as an FYI. On so, the so similar to these coaches. If we you say yes, then uh, then it's still going to be in the record. It's yeah, yeah. It's just an FYI. We're not going to act on. Yeah, right now it's considered a uh, board meeting. Yeah. So to be treated similar to the geese cooch movement. What? <laughs> so you're not voting. You're I, I, I hate to have to vote. You wouldn't be accepting them. The way, you would treat them the same way as we do east cooch. They're for your information only. So you wouldn't necessarily have to approve the August 15th meeting minutes. Yeah. And then they, they cannot be removed from the... That's correct. We would keep them in the packet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You couldn't approve them anyway because you weren't there. So you wouldn't know if they're accurate or not. <coughs> you still don't know if that's a was a regular. But it's come to this board. Should I vote on it or not? Should I vote on it or not? Well, but you can leave. You can vote to leave it as part of the packet record as an. <laughs> yeah. What? No, that's kind of a problem here. If we weren't at the meeting, we can't vote on this uh, record of the meeting. No, right? you're but voting. You the motion on the table is to vote to change these meeting minutes so that they wouldn't be approved. They would only be included in the packet as an FYI, similar to East Cooch. So it's not a, a vote to accept yeah. the meeting minutes. Okay. It just doesn't so accept them vote as part of the packet. Okay. Okay, and end of discussion. If not, Mike? I vote yes. 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 No. Because I don't know if that was a regular or a legal type meeting. Okay, Bob. I vote yes. And I'll vote yes. Okay. <coughs> Any other additions, deletions to the agenda? Not a motion to accept the agenda. I'll make second. All second. Motion by Blair? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rudd? I vote yes. What are we doing now? Well, for the agenda. Uh, for the approving the agenda. Yes. 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 And I say yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Minutes. Minutes. Minutes of the July 17th. Uh, North Cooch Area Sewer District Board Minutes. So moved, so approved. Okay. Don. And seconded by. I'll second it. All right. Mike second. Okay. Any discussion on those minutes? Mr. Chair, on the uh, minutes on the I and I update, on the Second line from the bottom, the minute state that the enabling legislation states that the interceptor lines need to be owned by NKSAD. And I don't think that's a factual statement. Where do you see that, Bob? At the bottom of the page, the second line from the bottom. The enabling legislation states that the interceptor lines need to be owned by the North Kuchichin area sanitary district. I don't believe that's a factual statement. It's a, a decision that the board, the, the, the attorney, it? advised First the executive director that it was. That the board could decide. That's what the legislation states. Yeah, the um, enabling legislation has been passed and accepted by everybody, including the state. And it was interpreted by the attorney that these interceptor lines need to be owned by Laura Cooch. Why, why? The board can decide. It says in the legislation.
Sure. Yes. Um, talk there. Uh, Robert was present and he was absent. So that's one other change I had to me. No, he was gone at the last meeting. He says he was present too. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't see that. Oh. We'll fix that one too. Glad you're in mind. <laughs> so he was thinking about us while he was telling sure. me. Yeah. Okay, anything else on that? Uh, well, we need to resolve this main thing, right? So what we are right now is yes. Well, you know this is a uh, just a mess, and it all boils down to the SOC that MPCA issued. That's what's know, driving this, yeah. And I don't know. I I don't know if there's any easy fix because I'm torn both ways on who owns what, and I've gotten different explanations of why. North Cooch needs to own this and that, and to me it doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, why can't we just leave it as it is? It seems like it's been working for how many years? Yeah, you know, we're kind of getting off right now. What we want to do is just approve the minutes at this time. We'll have time to talk about that in the future, but right now, uh, what I think is because that's what was stated, whether some of us feel it's right or wrong, it was stated and should have been corrected at the time. I don't want to start changing the words. And, that, that we think have been said, but you know, yeah. uh, we can know. Yeah. Do we, we don't need board action on this then, or no? Do we need board action on we, this? We just, I mean, you can just, we just need to accept the minutes. Yeah. And it's first, seconded. The amendment, yeah. I don't think we'll add that amendment then if I have that power. Because um, we need to move on. All right. So, all in favor? There's a lot of my voting on. Minutes. That the minutes are the way they are. Well, I don't know. We're going to change Roberts. Yeah. We'll change so that Roberts. he's not here and gone. We're going to change that? That yeah. Roberts not here and gone. Yeah. Yeah, boy, yes. Yes. Mr. Burton. Yes. Yes. To change the minutes? Just to no. right. the minutes. Just the minutes. Just the minutes. As just presented, yes. except striking Robert as being present. Everything else is the same. Robert's in there as present and absent, so we're just going to take him off the present. That's all we're voting on. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. Okay. I think are we we're on the June East uh, Cooch minutes? No, the next FYI. two minutes are just the FYIs. Okay. So just FYI. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to make sure that's where we're at. Disbursements. August disbursements is $95,416.53, including blanket authorization. Well, yes. 
Uh, the way it's looking, if we go down the path that I see us going down, it's going to cost us a lot more money. If we can't come to agreements on things, yes. Yeah. If we can actually get to the point that we have an agreement on ownership, and then within, like I said, within the next couple months, we can sign off on the schedule of compliance and actually start doing that work that's associated with the schedule of compliance, then we don't need um, Mr. Overstar to the extent that we have to this point. <coughs> But then it's likely that the engineering costs will start increasing. Mr. Chairman, I just uh, want to raise a question with regard to the PFA payment. Uh, there was no motion to authorize that payment. It was put on blanket a couple of years ago, and the other belief is that because of the fact that when we signed the PFA loan, it was explicitly explained that all those payments would need to be made, that there is the overlying thought that we don't need to bring it up each for the blanket took care of that. I believe it was last year about this time. Uh, well, then it should be included in the... Oh, fair enough. And just, just first one, or in a blanket off? When was this paid? Oh, yesterday. Yesterday. Oh. Okay. So I'm just timing. I didn't get here today, yesterday. Generally, it's spoken about, so we don't. Last, sure should be. last month on your agenda, it said under FYI, the PFA payment of three hundred and some thousand dollars is due August twenty. Yeah. But you agree it should have been on here, it just wasn't. I guess I never, I mean, never have, but yes, yeah, I have a little oversight. Yeah, you should probably have. Yep. have yep. That was just an oversight. Okay. All right. Anything else on the disbursements? So, um, the sheet says PFA required deposit is 13000 That's the with documents, deposits. So you recall about a year and a half ago, actually at the beginning of 2017, we gave, began making monthly deposits into our WIP account. So that sheet that's at the back of your packet just is there every month. It's what we're putting into our WIP account. And then once a year, we formally report to PFA that in the course of the year, this is how much we put into that account based on our goal. We, the board decided at the beginning of well, it was at the end of 2016 that they decided it, but we started doing it at the beginning of, sorry, end of 2016, we decided it. Beginning of 2017, we decided to start executing to pull that WIF money aside along with the PFA money so it didn't um, confuse the amount of money that we actually had liquid. It was, it's money that is spoken for that we're required for both WIF to put aside and our PFA payment to make. So that really never shows up in our checking account. It does temporarily until we make those deposits monthly into the uh, investment accounts that we've created for those. To right, pass through. Checking accounts. To pass through, the money market, basically. basically. Where is the PFA uh, disbursement and the It's just the transfer of funds. It shows up in the banking. That's what Bob said. We mistakenly didn't put it on the blanket authorizations, so it should have been. Last month in your packet, it explained exact amount. What is it? 338 something, I think? 335,000. $318.38. About that much. <coughs> okay. So, Steve, every month we get a surcharge payment from our entities that we bill based on their percentage of use. And then we take that money and we put it into a separate PFA account so that when the payments come due, all that money that was earmarked for the surcharge is put aside. So it never really shows up in our checking account to skew those numbers and make it look like we have more money than we do. Mr. Chair, I, I don't think it's a proper uh, to have a blanket for a payment of 335000 I think 
there should be a motion by the board authorizing that payment. What's the timing of that? that once a year. Annually. Twice a year. Well, once for the big one, and then in February it's an interest only payment of under 100000 So what Bob's asking is, for instance, last month we would have approved it, so it has to be paid this month. Um, anybody see anything wrong with that? They didn't approve? But, okay, so that's just a motion. We don't have a second for discussion. Any second? I'll second. All right. Mr. Gordon? Cindy, uh, let us know that we a motion was made. Yeah, Bob made a motion, right? No. Oh, no. Did, I'm sorry. No the only motion on the yeah, floor is no. approval. Okay, no. Of the disbursements. All right. I guess the only thing I what I get out of this conversation is if it's due in August, we should be told in July. And we were. Yeah, we were. The question is, should we approve it, officially approve it? We were notified, but should right. we officially so, approve it? Last year it was put on blanket because it's just a give me that we have to pay it each year. It's being taken yes. care of for and we have to pay it. Yeah. You can't you can't vote not to pay it. That's correct. And if you want, they can give you the schedule out until twenty forty two, I think it is when it's paid off. And it'll show you exactly what's required each August and each February. Okay. Well, where in this packet do I find it? It was in last month's. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Okay. Yes. This uh, credit card payment, what do we use the credit card for? If we have to order parts or equipment or supplies online, um, it can be used for travel. Like when Greg went to Grand Rapids, he would use the card to put uh, his hotel on. And Tom went to Duluth. And Tom went to Duluth for a training. Generally, we avoid using it unless it's for something along those lines, travel or something that we have to order online that we can't have an invoice. The county has credit cards, too. When you book rooms and that, you have to have a credit card. Yeah. We try to minimize the use of it, but there's just sometimes that you can't help it. Anything else on the disbursements? Not. Let's move to financial reports. Can we vote on this? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were going to take a vote. Okay. Can we have a motion to accept the uh, August disbursement? Okay, not already did. Second? Robert. I second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. I vote yes. 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 No. Yes. Financial reports. Motion to accept. Second. Okay, any discussion?
Before we start this, I just want to say something quickly. Is, uh, I may have seen a little rummy today. It's because I was up till one past one o'clock thinking about what we're going to be talking about in the next half hour or so. And uh, that's why I'm a little rummy. Okay. Old business resolution 7 18. So it was tabled at the last meeting, so we need to untable it. <coughs> Motion. motion on the table. Motion to on table, take it off the table. By John, seconded by? Second. Seconded by Mr. Steve. Okay, discussion. No discussion, we'll uh, make, take a vote. Mr. Rep. I don't want my main vote, I'll just tell you this. Just on table, the resolution 718. I vote yes. 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 No. Yes. Okay. So we have to so do a vote. Well, we need a motion for discussion. Okay, so we don't have zero. Okay, because there was originally a motion seconded and then it was tabled, so we don't have to do a motion second again, or we do. I think so. Okay, a motion to accept resolution 718. So moved. Seconded. Um, second. Okay, John seconds it. Okay, now it's open for discussion. Well, Mr. Chairman, I would go back to uh, Member Blair's discussion that there should be a uh, some type of action by each of the entities with regard to, uh, to ownership. So I would move to table resolution 718 until each entity has taken official action with regard to the ownership. The motion at the last meeting was just to provide the resolution to all three of the entities. Not to ex or not to have them accepted. Right. So now I'm making a motion to table it until such time as we receive a official action from each of the entities. My discussions with the mayor of Rainier, they were not aware, and so they were. They were made aware well, of that. They saw it. Yeah. I sent it to them. I would say he's confused about the issue, but. And East Cooch actually made a motion at their last meeting to that they accepted resolution 718. To do what? Okay. That they accepted that they looked at 718. They looked yeah. at it yeah. and they agreed that right. with the ownership issues. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Rainier did agree to the Overstar memo was right. right. They did take so now we're waiting for a what? No, we'll that's a good question. We had a motion in second, then we had a bottom. Uh, wanted uh, made a motion to table it. Correct. So I'm assuming that's proper protocol. You get a second to table then. Is there a second on that? I thought we already had a motion. We have yeah, this is a motion to the original motion. Yeah. This is to table. If it's not if it's not seconded then the we'll motion add. fails. The motion to table. The fails. motion to table fails. I'll second it. Okay. For I, discussion, I don't know what. Uh, well, what I, I guess I'm a little bit confused. But uh, if the city of International Falls wants to take ownership, I really don't have a problem with it. I think it would save North Coast money in the long run. Uh, our uh, attorney, uh, the. Chairman got this ownership. He's he's done a study of it, and so that's what that's what I'm going on. That's what I'm going on. It's past history, um, and so that's where we are right now. I, the, 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 so your attorney thinks it should be uh, a joint ownership. That should, be, that should be North Coach. It should be North Coach ownership of that one. Our attorney. Our attorney. Our attorney. Suggested that it's, uh, we can enter into a maintenance agreement or a joint powers agreement with International Falls about the portion of lines that's in question, assuming that we continue to own it. 
So, but the question right now is whether or not to table. Any other discussion on tabling? No. Mr. Chairman, uh, has Rainier City Council taken official action? Not to my knowledge. But I don't know that for sure. Any other then the City of International Falls has taken official action opposing 718. So has East Cooch taken official action to accept 718? Very good. Apparently, so it's Rainier. Rainier has? Um, apparently, that's what I was just told. They, they've accepted the Overstar memo and they've seen resolution 718, but I don't know that they've taken official action. I can't no. see that for sure. Okay. Perfect. Any other discussion? If not, I'd call for a vote. We're voting on tabling it? Yes. I vote yes. To table 718. Okay. And then a no vote would be a vote on it. Until, no. until each entity has taken official action. Wait a minute. But okay. where is the, the, in the. That's East the same thing you were asking yeah. for. Yeah, where's the East Cooch Mets where they approved it? You haven't seen those ones yet because they have oh. to be approved. Okay, well. As board chair, I can tell you that that happened. The other thing to keep in mind is that the MPCA is getting very impatient. If we don't make certain milestones, their action is probably going to escalate. So the yes vote is to table it, right? Yes. That's correct. Yeah. The, uh, are we still in discussion here? Yes, no. Yeah, yeah. Right. if we vote no, then we should. Yeah, we're going to vote. There's no discussion. Oh, okay, Mr. Discussion I is vote yes. I vote yes. No, I vote no. Yes. No. Yes. No. I'm going to be here forever. Motion. Well, that's it. Yeah. All right. Just wait, what was that? Well, how many yeses and how many no's? Uh, I mean, you can reconsider. I mean, you can consider your vote too at some point. Then. But uh, what was what was the score it's here? Let's vote till we get. Other entities have to approve it. Yes. Yes. You know, well, four so three three should have, should have a yeah. Four yeah. no's. There's three four. no's and it, four. It's yeah. going to be tabled. Four yeses and three. It's yeah. going to be tabled again. Yes. Yep. And Rainier's got to act on it. I mean, they're, this is important to us. We're saying... I think you're missing the point of the district. The district is the hierarchy. It's the top of that chain. We have regulatory authority over all three entities. They do not get to tell us what to do. We tell them what we need from them. That is what is written in the enabling legislation. Okay, no, it's okay. I'm a little, I'm a little runny, so I made a big mistake here. I should have talked before. I no way I thought this would be table. <sighs> we hired legal counsel, an expert in the field, somebody we all thought was good. I don't know anybody more of an expert. He didn't waver at all. He said we needed to own these. No question asked. Paid plenty of money for it. Uh, he said we need to establish ownership of these needed lines for operation of the uh, sewer district. Simple and easy as that. He suggested a joint powers and a maintenance agreement. Good solution to it, if that's what needs to be done. And that would basically formalize the way it's been set up yes. for 35 yes. years. Yes, so here we are, one point, about a year and a half, working with the MPCA on this corrective action and little movement on our part. And there's no reason for us not to have had any movement. This is ridiculous. Jeez, intercepted blinds, lift stations, I Falls wants to own this ownership. It's going to take months, if not years, because of all the hoops that we have to jump to in order for that to happen. Who did we talk to that said this is, hasn't happened before and it has to be approved by who? Because of the fact that certain components of our district are were financed under the PFA loan that we have, certain components that we updated during that project can't be transferred without yeah. approval from the PFA yeah. and from the Commissioner of Management if, and Budget. If I could just say one thing, uh, uh, that if we table it, and I think uh, they're going to want to adopt uh, a Resolution 818, 
we do that, that's just the start of a big mess. Okay, yeah, I'll tell you what, I will let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. To think that North Cooch would not need control over interceptor lines when they supply all wastewater from Rainier, East Cooch, and International Falls to the waste treatment plant would be irresponsible decision by this board. We have to have some type of if minimum would be uh, unrestricted access. That would be crazy. That'd be like you having a next door neighbor, both your lines meet to go to the road. Your neighbor has 10 people in your family and you're a single person. That person says, you know what? We'll pay for all the what's in between there and everything is going to be fine. That's joint pipe that goes out to the road. Would you agree to that? With the, it saying, the power of saying, you know what? What's going through that line? We're, we, don't, we don't want you to flush that down the toilet because that may plug it. We don't want you to do this, do that. All things that could happen. Nobody here would approve that. Nobody would go along with it, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. If we do not settle this soon, it's going to go to court. Do we want the courts to make this decision for us? Are we that inept we can't even take care of this? This is ridiculous. Let's not confuse the real issues at hand with the MPCA with unfair costs put on certain districts. Dispute on the EK maintenance agreement. Who will do a better job maintaining the lines? That's, that's something else. This is going to take months if not years to take care of. This is, we're going to be sitting here well into next year still deciding whether we're going to pass this resolution because there's no way that you're going to get a majority vote as long as Cooch, North Cooch, at a minimum, has full access to those lines. And I don't know if that's something that the city would go for. All right, I just had to say it. Sorry. Okay, Mr. Brown. No, I, no I, I agree with you completely. This has gone way too far. We spent way too much time on this. 80, uh, the resolution 818 is going to take us into court. Yes. And it's going to cost everybody a lot of money. And 718 is, will prevail. I, I would uh, take my life on it that resolution 718 would prevail in, in court. And we have to go through the state, and uh, you know, there's state, uh, there's state statutes involved. And, you know, that, wow. that's good. Okay, thank you. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, first of all, the, again, the legislation is subjective. The board can decide what lines are necessary or aren't necessary. The mayor of Rainier agrees with International Falls. Maybe his representative doesn't. For 35 years, the city has maintained, cared for, cleaned, and operated that line from 11th, 3rd Avenue and 11th Street to the EQ for 35 years. North Kuchiching didn't know that they even owned it. North Kuchiching does not have the equipment to maintain, to clean, or care for the line. So the city is asking for ownership. It will operate the same way that it has for the past 35 years into the future. And North Cooch has the power to hire people to do what's necessary for them. Just like International and Falls did. Yeah. The Mayor like Rainier. Yeah. Yeah. The Mayor <coughs> Rainier. The Mayor Rainier was at the meeting and yeah. and he um, supported International Falls well, I don't, having the I don't ownership. Think that's he thought what that I saw. he thought he thought that was he didn't see that being a bad option, but he definitely was very careful to be tiptoeing, not agreeing with anybody he tried. Yeah. And he has told me since that he supports yeah. it. Um, and he's told me since, outside the office that day, opposite of that. Okay. Yeah. I know that particular line has been worked on by many, many different contractors, all the town contractors. Uh, you know, North Cooch hires cleaning contractors maintenance contractors all the time. I'm looking up their certificate of commendation there. We know that the district is well operated, well run, well maintained. And, and to say that our staff cannot do that 
aren't qualified to take care of that line is, is really a slap in the face, I think. That's not what was said. It's that you do not have the equipment. Well, I know the City of International Falls has also hired out-of-town contractors with their equipment to reline, repay, or uh, to work on those uh, those lines. And, right. and uh, maybe uh, I think you've used uh, contractors to clean that line. I'm not sure, but... This past summer they did. Well, you know, that's, that's that line. trivial, that, that part of it. I mean, you can hire people to do it. Hire people yeah. to televise it, hire people to... Uh, and I think the Joint Powers Agreement along with the maintenance uh, agreement the city did. It's a way to formalize sense. exactly what we've been doing for 35 yes. years. Further, if the board agreed to enter into a joint powers or maintenance agreement with International Falls on that, it would actually save International Falls money because instead of covering 100% of the cost of that line, then they would start getting subsidized for the flow from Rainier and East Cooch that goes through there. We'd be able to contribute to their maintenance costs. The fact that International Falls is looking at this as that it would cost them more is absurd. Assuming that we could pass a maintenance agreement in which we would pay them for the portion of our maintenance that needs to be required there. Mr. Chair, um, I, you know, I, I can go either way on that line through the City of International Falls that from Third Avenue to the Eleventh Street or whatever. But these lift stations now. East Coach's boundaries go to lift station one. East Coach District starts at lift station one. With Rainier inside of that, yes. Right. So, so when we take effluent from a, a certain entity, we should be on the downward boundary of that entity where we're taking. We're not a municipality. We're moving we're a that district. sort. Huh? We're not a municipality. We're a district. Our right. district encompasses three entities, formally four. The control of these lift stations is pretty subjective, I, I think. I don't know why we, we have to have lift station eight versus billing. somewhere else. For billing. We, yeah, there's a meter in there that's used for billing. Well, we should just have it at lift station one. You and can't. then Rainier can have, have their own agreement with these Cooch. You can't do that. Why? Because then basically you're dissolving the district. Who I'm not dissolving any district. No, if you just, give away everything from East Cooch and Rainier away, then basically, and you're saying you need to take care of that, you're, you're dissolving that portion of the district. You need that to transport the effluent to the plant, and you need it for building. Well, that, that explanation of transporting that effluent to the plant is fictitious, because no. I mean, if we, we would have all those east lift stations from, from Rainier all the way to Shea Shea then, if we, if we need those to transport the effluent to the plant. You know, Stephen, that's something I think we could talk about in the future when this is done. The maintenance agreement, joint powers, and as far as the lift stations, maybe an unlimited access just to those meters in those lift stations because that's how uh, North Cooch builds. We'd have to have access to that and not have to go through anybody. I mean, I could see that possibly happy. So give it to them. We just have a right to go to those, look at those meters anytime we want, fix them whenever we want without talking to the other districts. Point of order, Mr. Yes, Chair. Don. Uh, resolution 718 was tabled. I suggest that we move on to okay. the next item. I agree, because we'll, I agree with you, Don, because we're going to be talking like this for the next, yes. hopefully I don't well, and, and, and my take out of the meeting at City Hall was the Mayor of Rainier was going to talk to Overstar. That's yeah. the last thing that's I heard out of That's what Ben would And so, yeah. If so I mean, I, that's, that's why I think Haley is not a bad idea to that we could call a special meeting and, and vote on it. And, I mean, what, what do you have any take on it? Yeah. It's just that it's been. Okay, for Don's request, and I agree with it, let's move on. Next, we have resolution 818 from the City of International Falls. Wish everybody have a chance to look at that. Move adoption of the resolution 818. Okay, 
Resolution 18 has been put on the table and we have a second. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Rudd. Yes. And I, I think it, um, I'll move to table it, or do we have to have vote on it first? Because it, it, it is in line with 718, so I mean, we can't do anything with that one until we get figured out what we're going to do on 718. It's either one or the other, really. But, but that's okay. We need a motion to table. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second to, to table it? No. You made a motion to table it, didn't you? Yeah. Eighteen. Yes, but Bob made a motion to approve it, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. This is kind of in line of our last. We've done this before. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to table it. Okay. We have a second on the table. Do we have a second on table? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Rudd. Discuss do we have any discussion on tabling? I guess that's got to be out there. Do you have any discussion on this? If not, I vote yes. yes. Yes, Robert. For, for tabling? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Brother? This is to table the motion? Yeah. Uh, we haven't gotten a response from you here one way or another yet, so how can we act on it? We're voting. We're beyond the discussion stage. Where, where are we at? Who's voting? Who's next? Mr. Bergman? Oh, that's uh, that, 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 that's, that's BS. Are you voting to uh, table, John? Uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to uh, vote uh, to table. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. No. No. Yes. That's BS. Well, it's that, that's that's up jumping to conclusions. That, that's really shoddy work. Okay, hey, I know you're okay. pretty offended by that. So, obviously, by ta tabling this motion, it's or this resolution, it's still on the table. Yeah. But, yeah. And that's. It's only fair from the table that the uh, I don't so know. give them the opportunity. So the I and I update, obviously our biggest focus has been ownership and trying to understand, make sure that we have all of our ducks in a row so that if either resolution passed, we understood the ramifications of that. Um, next uh, meeting. Uh, can we discuss taking this to uh, to a higher a court, the the administrative law judge. The ownership right? question. That I would like to. Uh, uh, I'd like to take a look at that. I'd like to uh, maybe get permission from the board to talk to our attorney about the um, administrative law judge. Or meeting with the administrative law judge. Yeah. To settle this question. Should that make sense to you, Director? I think at some point we're going to end up in a stalemate on this. Well, I think we're, personally, I think we're there. So, uh, would it make sense or just give it another month and see if we can pass it one more time? If I can talk to Mr. Overstar and find out what that procedure would be and then bring it back to the board and see if that's how we want to proceed mm -hmm. from there. I don't think our attorney is going to change his mind on this. No, it wouldn't be our attorney. It would no. be to put it at a higher level, have some help. It isn't enough for Overstar, who's an, uh, he's a very expert in the field, and we all thought he was an expert. It's, he, he doesn't know enough for us to go along with it, I guess, by what our vote today. Well, I would like the director to reach out to Rainier and make sure they get a uh, some type of a formal motion from the Rainier Council on regarding these okay, resolutions. We have, we have one motion for next first. meeting. Hold on, one motion here to find out what it would take to 
proceed further to an administrative court judge? Well, just to put on the uh, because there was uh, no we didn't. Uh, Any motion? No, I didn't make a motion. I just I, I just said, can we rather than just coming up to the office and saying, would you find out about that? Okay, sounds good. Yeah, put it on the agenda for next. Time. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, what are we gonna put on the agenda? It's a discussion on uh, having this go to an administrative judge, or if that's what it would be, some type of a higher level to make a decision on the ownership. But we're going to just have a discussion, is all it is for next and week. I'll so we're going to discuss it today. I'll so. probably coordinate with Mr. Oberstar and get him on the phone to explain it sure. and answer the questions directly. Okay. All right. So I don't have to be the middleman. Sounds good. Steve, did you have something, somebody over there? Well, I don't know if it, need, it needs a motion, but I think somehow Rainier's got to be aware that, that we need some formal action from him. We have to work, supposedly, East Cooch has taken formal action on 718. And did they take formal action on 818 yet? We, we just got 818. It hasn't been approved. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe if they're. Um, and also, back to the other the district does not need approval from their entities to proceed down any path. It's that's the true, opposite. But some people here do feel they want that, and that's why it was voted the way it was. So, okay. Anything else? Mr. I Chair. think that with the discussion keep going like this, our cost is going to escalate very highly. And I can't see that. It's in the best interest of North Cooch. I don't think it's the best interest of anybody personally. I think all this is going to do is more expense is going to keep building. But that's here or nay, because I don't well, think cost has anything to do with it. I just, anybody else's. If any action we took today is not going to add any more costs. We tabled it for one month because we need Rainier's input. How they feel about these? That's Finish. your thought. But we had something different every every month. Yeah, we have some reason. Now I guarantee something yeah. else is going to come up next month, yeah. and that's fine. But don't say that the is already <laughs> telling anyway. us that we don't act. Okay. All right. We had a question from the audience. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make a statement. Um, you know, as a staff representative for the City of International Falls. We responded to an inquiry from the North Cooch Board and the North Cooch staff as to what our opinion was and what our comments were as to the ownership issues, which are the very issues that you're um, addressing. And so we did that. We deliberately put together a memorandum, outlined our position and our rationale for that position. We presented that to your board. Um, there was a, I think, a very immediate and response from your legal counsel that that wasn't a legal argument. We weren't asked for legal arguments. We were asked to provide what our opinion was on the ownership issues. And I think the City of International Falls provided a very thorough, complete report about what our position was and why we, what we were using to justify our position. Namely, on the line that runs from the 3rd Avenue and 11th Street lift station all the way to the EQ, that the city's maintained it for the last 35 years. We have numerous, numerous trunk lines and manholes that we've maintained and cared for. And if there's any failure in that system or any problems in that system, the City of International Falls elected officials are going to get called on that, as is our staff, because it's in the City of International Falls. So I'm a little bit baffled by this discussion and debate and uncertainty when we were responding to an inquiry that you made. And I hear your staff saying that it doesn't matter what we think because we're the top dog and we can do whatever we want. You are asking for our input, we've provided that input, and I appreciate your, your consideration of what our position is. And I just hope that you continue to do that. And, and I think that you've been um, rational and prudent in tabling this to try and get input from the other entities, which is what you should do. And that's what I would do in your position too. But I don't want you to just automatically discount what we the work and the effort that we put in. And I think that's why I personally felt offended when we spent two hours meeting with uh, Mr. Bruggeman and, and uh, yourself to talk about what the city's position was so that we made that clear and everybody understood where we were at. And it was a one business day afterwards and you guys had uh, Resolution 718 to adopt and totally discount anything that the city uh, city's position was. So I would just offer a personal comment 
that if you want, I think it's prudent for you, if you want to get information about what next steps potentially could be, that's fine. But I think anybody's going to ask any administrative law judge, well, what position is your board? What's the position of the entities that make up your sewer district before they're going to take any decision? That would be from a, you know, 25 or 30 years of experience in local government. I think that's what you can expect. So I appreciate you're going forward this way, but I, you know, and I, I think I just don't want you to automatically discount what our position is, as well as the position of Rainier and the East Coochie Sewer District. So thank you for that. Thank you. And before I, John, you talk, I just want to, like I did at the meeting, with uh, the most recent meeting at City Hall that the meeting we had with the city. I again would reiterate that I'm taking, I'll take responsibility for that, for you feeling the way you are, because I guess we didn't, I mean, I had a discussion. I thought, I looked at what happened that day a little differently. I thought the outcome was. I thought the joint powers, the city taking care of it made sense. And I thought, kind of, I was excited about that. I think Mr. Grubman was excited. I know our attorney was excited after his new talk. And I guess what we didn't do is verbally get back to yourself or Bob uh, and say, uh, it's a great idea, but we need to get this done first. <coughs> then we'll take care of that. But we got to get this MPCA thing at least on the road a little bit here. So I apologize for that. What you guys brought that day was fantastic, and I think we all thought it was. And to think that you guys would do the maintenance for that and offer that, I thought that was awesome. And to get the joint powers from Mr. Overstar, that wow, everything's falling into place. So I, to say that I, you know, I didn't relate what I and what we talked about. We went right to that meeting and passed. I can see why others could feel that. Okay. I I, I thought that the International Ball City Attorney was on board with that, uh, that approach. Yeah, I think it was pretty and good. I, I think this think. International Ball City Attorney does not agree with this other. He just, yeah. He, I think he understood the authority this board has, yeah. but wanted us to listen to the city and their ideas and us work together. And yeah. And, yeah, I, and he actually does have some expertise in sewer districts. He was counsel for uh, East Coach at one time and, and, and was involved in formation of this district. Yeah. Yeah. So, also you know, an advisor for the county board and the sewer extension. And Mr. Chairman, I just want to add, I think the city's position, the city of International Falls' position, and, and that's clear in the resolution that uh, 818 is the most recent action that the city council took, but we recognize that the North Cooch Board has the authority to make a decision about ownerships. I mean, I, I don't know that we're disputing that, but that's why we're trying to um, work with you and educate you about what the city's interests are and hope that uh, you'll be persuaded that that makes sense from a financial and from an operational standpoint for the City of International Falls to continue to maintain what we've maintained for the last 35 years, and we haven't had any problems doing that, uh, as far as I know, with any of the entities. Okay. I guess my biggest thing is with this... I, I worry about who's going to be, if something happens, you know, they're not going to come after the North Cooch. They're going to come after the city. Flying Plug or whatever, they're going to call the city. They're not going to call North Cooch. And I guess that's where my feelings come is if we give the responsibility to the city, it takes <coughs> the responsibility away from North Cooch. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, if somebody calls, I'm not a sewer expert by any means. But if somebody would call, wouldn't it be for the line, not our line, but the line that connects to it that plugs? Is that usually what happens? Typically. So the it, it should be having called the, the interceptor way. line, which is at that location, probably two or three feet in diameter, having that plug, it means that there's probably something more catastrophic going on at that point. We're okay. not disputing that those trunk lines and those interceptors that are coming in, or excuse me, the trunk lines and the laterals that are coming into the interceptor, they're part, part of the city. We're not talking about that. We're talking about that single line that's a big line running through the heart of the city. If we ever had a backup in that line, we have bigger problems. There is something catastrophic that has happened. Further, if we do have a backup in that line, because we technically still own it at this point, our liability insurance, once they found out what the root cause of that was, it would come back to us. If it was in a trunk or a lateral line, it would be a different story. But if there was something in that, 
main interceptor that ran through town that failed. If, if it failed, quite likely it would probably be something at EQ that plugged it or somehow didn't allow the water to move through. And like I said, I think, without having spoken with Craig, I think to have that line backed up, we'd be probably looking at much, much more serious issues. Might be more than one person calling, you're thinking? It would be a catastrophic failure at EQ or somewhere in that line. There'd be a car in that line or something ridiculous. I mean, the, the chances of that line backing up are slim. So the lateral lines are still a responsibility of the city? Absolutely. Yes, the right. only line, Mike, that we're talking about, like I said, it's going to be a big line that runs. It's that purple line on that map or on this map behind Steve. That map is actually the initial plan for the district. The dark purple line is probably tough to see where you are right now, but it's just that dark purple line that runs under the heart of the city. It, we're not talking about anything that connects into it. It's just that line that we're talking about. When we're talking about interceptors, that's all it is. It's nothing that connects. It's just that single line that transport that transports the flow of the wastewater as it collects it. It's and the main artery through the district. And that and that's one of my when I talk, that was my one of the big concerns, is that we're just talking about that big and if everything's backed up out East Cooch and Rainier, however that's affected, in our city of International Falls, you need to fix it. I don't think that would be the city of International Falls' responsibility. It'd be North Cooch. If there's a problem and with the I answer. don't think as a member of North Cooch, I'd want to have that liability on somebody other than ourselves. It's our it's our responsibility. Bob? Mr. Chairman, the, the vast majority of effluent that flows down that pipe is from International Falls. Mm -hmm. The vast majority. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I agree. All right. And I think that's uh, kind of why, I, and I can see why the city feels that way. They so, want more. Only yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see the numbers on that percentage because we got uh, pond discharge from there, uh, coming through there, and at times, you know, we got big pond discharge. Would it be safe to s possibly 50 50? Is that I, possible? I, 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 I don't know. We should be able to figure that out. We can probably spot check how much. How much out. of the ponds? I, I don't. Know, I don't really know because you know it's uh, time. How much of the ponds is is somebody else besides International Falls? Well, we, you know, we should maybe come up with those numbers somehow. The vast majority is International Falls. Mm, I don't know if it's a vast I majority. Really, I don't know if that's really the deciding factor, but okay. Can I ask Bob a question? Bob, so. The city is mainly concerned about the main line only. Is that the biggest concern with the city of ownership? Who yes. owns that main line? Yes. So I, a little more light of uh, that I can see now what we're really talking about. I, I, if it, you realize it all the time, Steve, that's all we're talking well, about? Well, when Cindy pointed out this map, I've never seen it before and was never referenced before, but this is 1981 and it clearly shows what we're looking for right uh, through the city. So, so I think sometimes I we're... Why it was never brought up before, I don't know. We're not we really... We just thought it was a special meeting with the city council. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I don't see any benefit to ownership, really, of that thing, Mike. I don't know why anybody wants it, really. I mean, uh, we never wanted it, North Coach, but because the city was taking care of it, we said, go ahead. Why? Because it's a 100-year-old pipe, and there's, you know, I, I know they've been doing a lot of maintenance on it, and I don't, but I don't know what kind of shape it's in. We have not had that information shared with us ever. Um, so it, it might need, need a million dollars worth of maintenance, you know. So... That's why I, it, you know, belongs with North Coach. I really don't want it myself, you know. Well, actually, Rainier don't want it. No, nobody. I don't know why anybody wants it. That's the truth. And when you go back to this map that Steve's looking at, when we started pulling some of the information of the projects that were done at the time of the formation of the district, there were projects A, B, C, D, E, and F. So some of those got dropped because they were involved with paper makers. A was a plant rehab in 1982 to 84. B was actually in situ forming that line. 
which was part of the formation of the district. C was creation, I believe, of a third pond, as I understand it, and the line that comes out of that pond and connects to the interceptor line that we keep talking about. And then D and E, I believe, if I recall properly, were the installation of the sewer in East Hooch, Old East Hooch and Rainier. So at that time, in the early 80s, when the district was coming together, everybody was working together. They were, they were pooling. John's explained this to me multiple times, and when I saw the documents, it made sense. At that time, all these communities had these little projects that they needed to do in the area. There's a rating system that you could get grants and, and monies appropriated to you, depending on your rating. You needed to make it into a top tier to be able to get that rating. Individually, all those projects couldn't get the funding. When they grouped together and came together and pooled their resources, that's when they got high enough on the list to do those things that were needed. We need to get back to that where we're all working together. And it happens on the boots on the ground level. The guys are helping one another all the time. There's not a question of who, whose name is on your paycheck. They're working together all the time. So you'd say the men on the boots on the ground, and I guess I would ask the person who has the boots on the ground, do you work well with the city? Yeah, and yeah we've yeah. we got a good relationship, and, and we're right. always working together and coordinating stuff together. If they need help, uh, we, we're there for them, and they if they ever need some help, issues? they're there for us. Have they ever had issues saying, you're not helping us, or no. you're not giving us information, or is it either way? And it's the same with Rainier no. as well. So what you're saying is, people that do the work can get along, but yeah. the guys yeah. on the table <laughs> yeah. can't get along. <laughs> well, yeah. I guess that's not unusual. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think you heard uh, at the Wednesday meeting from those who operate the mm -hmm. sewer system in International Falls, um, their feelings, and that's all that I'm bringing here today. Yeah, well, I think is those folks who. Yeah. Well, and I appreciated the line. I appreciated what they had to say, you know, but I, I think uh, they were okay with some of the solutions that we brought up with, such as getting a call when that valve is closed, which I'm not an expert in what that means, but it sounds like it was needed to be done. Um, maintenance, they want to make sure the maintenance is being done, and you know, all that I understand, but I, I didn't see them shake their head no or say that uh, joint powers or uh, Main Street with them wouldn't work. And actually, at the meeting with Mr. Shimon here, I thought they were all pretty well okay with maintenance agreement or joint powers. They all were, I, I got the impression that they really... It was actually city officials that, or city representatives that suggested that. Yeah, it made me feel good to hear that. You know, instead of us asking, they, I thought that was great of the city to come up that. I, I have nothing but admiration of the city and their workers. I thought after that meeting we had her, we had her taken care of, or at least in the long run. But we well, just heard from the city administrator different. Yeah. You have the state of Minnesota set up all this legislation about interceptor lines and who owns what, and that's what it's all about. If we give ownership completely to all that line. What's, what's to prevent somebody put a, a, a meter at the beginning of that line and say, now we're going to charge you for all this stuff going through. No, you shake your head that International Falls wouldn't do that, but it's not legal. What do you mean it's not legal? You own the line. That's what you're saying right now. The state of Minnesota set up so that to prevent that, not saying International Falls would do that, but to prevent that, You're they set that. up interceptor lines, gave a complete definition as to how it operates. Did you see that? All this is, is just a big waste of time. Okay, where were we at anyway? I and I update. Okay, do you have anything else on the I and I update? I um, like, I don't, like one sentence or whatever, but uh, the I and I update uh, spoke with the MPC again. Um, they basically have indicated that their patience is running out. 
uh, if we don't get ownership determined and an SOC um, signed off on, they're likely to escalate their action, which they're not committing to doing it, but if we don't have something within the next few months, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year they are getting the courts involved, which then means that we're no longer negotiating on our schedule of compliance. A judge will tell us exactly what we need to do and specify the time frames for that. So the control of or the, the power to negotiate with the NPCA will disappear if we get to that point. One of the things I've thought of, and I uh, remember again, I haven't been on the board that terribly long, is my question is if, if the ownership, let's say we decided to give the ownership of different lines and the lift stations, are there any of our loans out there that are against any of those? Yep. I think I mentioned that at the beginning of the meeting. I'm sorry. But that's okay. Um, with the PFA loan that we took out, uh, for the plant upgrade in 2014, there was work done on lift stations 1, 7, and 8, South Falls 2, and a major upgrade to South Falls 1, which is both South Falls 1 and 2 only handle international falls flow, but we talked about that yeah. at the meeting on Wednesday. Um, there's paperwork, and then there's other restricted property, like the plant and human plants along, or ponds along those lines. Um, if we were to transfer ownership of any of those specifically listed restricted properties or anything that we've done an upgrade to, um, it would require approval from PFA and the Commissioner of Management and Budget. Was there, would there be any, is there a way to measure outstanding loans against any of those if ownership was transferred? I would think if anything's transferred, if there's any debt owed, I think that would be transferred with it. Does that make sense? I don't know exactly how they would work. I asked David Overstar if he had any experience with it. He said, typically, you don't start giving away or selling your assets. It, the only way that you would take something out of service that has a loan against or the only way you wouldn't still be operating something that had a loan against it was if you took it out of service. So there's not a lot of experience, if any. For him. For him, okay. You know, I mean, if you talk to somebody at PFA or... They might know, okay. Um, the Commissioner of Management and Budget, they would be able to tell you how that works. Yeah, I'm just curious. But it could be a process. I don't know if it would be a quick and easy process or if it would be a lengthy process to get that even taken care of. Okay. And that's what, kind of what my concern is. I, it's, I just see a lot of things coming up. If that's something even to be decided, it would take forever. So. These are right. some of those things that when we talk about ownership, we don't necessarily expect. Like when I found this the other day, um, I I was surprised to realize that South Falls 2 also had a new panel put in, which means that when Mr. Overstar talks about transferring that in his memo, that would be a step that we would have to cross, assuming that we still wanted to go down that path. Okay. Or lift stations 1, 7, and 8. Good, thanks. Oh, Steve. I had a question on that lift station 1. Um, Rainier Boundary now goes to lift station 1, correct? I don't know. So, and we have meters in lift station 7 for Rainier. Mm -hmm. While well, Rainier's, they just annexed the whole French and Jameson addition. So their Rainier, the Rainier boundary goes to list station one. So who, all that affluent from Jameson and French, is that East Cooch is affluent or is that Rainier's affluent? East, East Cooch. That's a memo of understanding that East Cooch should maintain the <clears throat> ownership of the. When they annexed the, the, yeah. the county of. The powers to be in the counties had it written that East Cooch would take ownership of those lines. So those people pay East Cooch for their right. sewer, not Rainier. Okay. But East Cooch is billed the same as International Falls is per thousand gallons. Two, 281? 281. 281 per thousand gallons. East Cooch pays for everything that's metered. As Rainier pays 281 as does International Falls. They all pay the same per thousand gallons of meter usage. And however they build their residence is up to them. That's outside of this office. <coughs> well, it's outside the North Cooch portion of the office. East Cooch builds all their own residence. As does right here in International Falls. <coughs> but they pay the same as International Falls. Mr. Rudd. 
John, is uh, Jameson and Fresh Tradition, is that uh, a fourth me? What's that now? No. Jameson and French. It's not a fourth me? No. No. Of course not. Everything Easter Rainiers is fourth me? No. no. I'm kind of confused. Well, just across, uh, just a section of it from Lift Station 8 into the city of Rainier, the existing uh, collection system. This thing says it's Force Main all the way to. Um, That's not what he is. Clark's Park. He just asked, is it Force Main through Jameson? And there it just says Force Main from all the way from uh, Clark's Park was he, originally he's Cooch ended to uh, the parks. Keep in mind that I think when that map <coughs> was developed, both. those lines weren't in, those were planned lines. The lighter line, at I recall. Correct. That that line from Rainier to Clark's Park was put in in '84, I believe. Somewhere around there. Any other? Some of that is force. Some of that is gravity. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Jameson or French tradition is gravity. Yes. Okay. Are you done, Cindy? Right on. Yeah. So moving on to Island View update. Uh, Island View has been a little bit slow going. We're not quite what we expected, where we expected to be earlier in the year. Um, Camp Cooch is going into Lift Station 100. Um, they've done some modifications on Lift Station 100 because of a technical issue that they had. Um, all of the upgrades have been done in the jackfish detention tank. And within the next few weeks, they're still talking about bringing additional lift stations and houses online. Okay. Staff and committee reports. Operators. I have one more question. Oh, one question. So okay. I'm looking at the hours here. Mm -hmm. When East Coosh has a meeting, do your hours build to East Coosh? Mine personally? Yours and Stacy's when you do the East Coosh meetings? Or is North Coosh? To build North Cooch. I'm usually doing my North Cooch work when the meeting's going on, kind of half listening. Stacy's salary is half paid by East Cooch, so she doesn't track her bills. Or she doesn't track her hours, I'm sorry. Okay. These are, what you see on this chart is solely maintenance. Okay. Having said that, Mike, that is one of the things for my hours that I've been thinking about talking to East Cooch about because as Island View comes on, I think there is an opportunity that I may need to start billing East Cooch for some of my time. Right now I do get involved in some of these issues with Island View because of the fact it's my employees that have to work on it and I want to make sure that they have what they need and that they're taken care of. But as I get into this, I think that there is some room to fill East Cooch for some of those hours. So that's something that I need to talk to East Cooch about as well. I'm not, uh, again, I haven't have, don't have a problem, but as a board member, I have no, no idea how many hours you work a month. Well, we're approved for four hours a day, so it's uh, 20 hours a week. Okay, that's all you don't bill us for any more than 20 hours a week? That's correct. Okay. However, if I do have, there's some weeks where I do go over. So if I do go over, I keep track of my comp time and then I use the comp time accordingly. That's all tracked. Director's report. No. Operators. 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 Yep, right back. Oh, we did do already here. Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, a few things here. First of all, I talked about the DMRQA study back, started, uh, the study opened in March, closed in July, and uh, we waited for our results back. After July 6th, it closed. So we had all our stuff sent in, and the first part of August here, we did receive our results back, and uh, all of our results for the DMRQA study came back acceptable. So we did pass all of our testing that we did in the lab for the for the study. Also, our contract lab that does all of our contract testing, they they passed everything for us too. Everything that they did for us. 
So uh, we did get that submitted. We had to submit that to our DMR coordinator, Sarah Yost at the MPCA. That's due by August 31st, and we had that submitted on August 13th. We submitted that. And like I say, we all of our test results came back acceptable. Our uh, ERA out of Colorado does forward the results to them also, the coordinator, but we have to fill out some forms and stuff and submit it also. So that has been submitted to the MPCA, and we passed that. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good uh, on the sludge. We're making sludge and stuff for the biosolids removal. We figure we got about 260, 270,000 gallons in the tank right now. And we've been in contact with uh, Montaigne about hauling. We're looking at the first part of September. After August 31st is when we like to haul for the cropping year. And uh, we should be getting real close to having our digester empty. And we're running that about three days a week right now, the gravity belt thickener. And uh, so we should be ready for him in another week or two here. But like I said, last year we hauled 271,000 gallons, so we got to be getting close to having the digester down in a good shape. And then if it stays dry, I think we, we should have good going out in the fields. And then uh, once that's empty, well, like I said, we'll drain it all down and flush all the lines out so we can go into winter with the tank empty again. Uh, <clears throat> the last meeting we talked about that 20 horsepower pump. We got pricing on it for that 20 horse. And uh, uh, we did not order that yet. And the reason is, right now the river is low. We have the effluent lift station off. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I was talking with one of the pump guys from Electric Pump in the cities. And remember I told you the pump was failing. But he kind of recommended, he said, it is possible, there's a slight chance that it could be this motherboard that's in this pump. But the only thing is there's special tools to get this pump apart. So it's either we send it down there and have them look at it, you know, and absorb that cost, just to see if it for sure 100% is the winding. But he said it could be, a, there's a board in there, but there's special tools to get this pump apart. End of August here, Electric Pump has come to Little Fork. So we got in contact with them, that the guys that are going to be coming up here. They're going to stop by here when they're done in Little Fork. And we're going to pull the pump out and we're going to bring their tools and stuff with it. We're going to take it apart right on site here and check the board and also check the cord just to be eliminate a couple things. He said it, it's possible that it could just be that. If it's just this board, he said it's worth fixing. If the winding checks out good. But in order for us to do that, there's special tools to get that thing apart. Best you to inspect the motor housing. There's a special tool that you have to use to get the motor housing, to inspect the motor housing. So I think it's worth a shot to just take a look at that. Right now the effluent lift station isn't even running. The river's so low. So let's just see what happens with that first. So, so, so if you pull that pump and they do test the pump and you realize that the pump is shot, the windings, then we'll have to well, how long does it take to get a new pump then? Uh, four to six weeks. But well, we got two pumps down there right now. Like I say, the river's low. It's been dry. It's been off for the last two weeks. It would have to rain for 40 days and 40 nights at this point for us to have to worry about using that third pump. Well, I think that's the way to go. Yeah, what's I think so What's the new too. board cost? Huh? What, if it's the board, what's the new board 400 cost? bucks. How much? 400, he said. If it's a cord, about 1,500. It could be possible it might be just the cord too. So they'll separate everything and mag out everything and home everything separately just to confirm it. He said there's a slight chance it could be that. It's worth checking because of the price of a new pump. They give you a pump would cost 20,000. Huh? 20, 20, 20, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So they give you kind of an idea what it would cost to have the pump checked over? Uh, they didn't really say. They're just going to swing up there for an hour or so and we'll pull it out. And, and uh, help them, and they got the tools. We'll take it apart quick, and I think that's the route to go. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. So it's worth a shot. At the end of the day, it is kicking the can a little bit because this is what 28 years old or something like that. Yeah, 27. So ultimately, we are getting close to needing to replace it, but this is something that we can budget and plan for a little bit better if it is just an electrical issue that we're talking about. So it, it probably is worth 
spending 1500 bucks if it's the cord to fix it and then get a little bit more life out of that pump and yeah. then address you know, it later down the street. It's 27 years old, but it doesn't run continuous every day. Like now, the station's off, so the pump's are sitting there. So I think it's worth a shot to see what happens. Absolutely. Uh, like I say, the river elevation is down, so we're in good shape. Also, we got a call from uh, Minnesota Rural Water. They asked if we'd be uh, interested in hosting a, a training seminar next spring here. And uh, they would work with us to set up some uh, speakers and stuff, and we'd be able to attend that and get training hours for that. So, you know, they usually would go to these different towns and stuff. Well, they called us and asked if we'd like to host that. I said, yeah, I think we probably would. We, the only thing is they want to work with us to find a location sure. and work with some speakers and stuff and set up an agenda to do that. So we'll find out all the details on that. And During the yeah, we'll get some more information on that. And College. The last time they had it here, one other time they had it at the Elks, but maybe there's another spot we could use to... Once we find more of the details, we'll find out what kind of capacity they usually have for it and what they're looking for, and then once we, before we yeah. finalize anything, of course, we'll bring it to the board, but yeah. I think this is an interesting opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many also, people, how many people, huh? how many people do they attract to the, 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 these other ones? Twenty? It, it depends on, it's hard to say. And this is, some, of the, some of the classes are pretty good size and some are small. This is interesting as well because at, the, at some of these training seminars that the guys are going to, the city crew is also going to them. So if we can set up a seminar that not only benefits our wastewater guys, but also some of the city sewer and water people, there's a win for the city as well. You don't have the transportation costs and such. So once we find out more details, we'll figure yeah. out what we can do. We might touch base with Ted and Gary to see if there's anything that they want to have trained or be trained on, and we'll go from there. Sure. Also, uh, brought it up a while back about the primary digester that we should keep in mind that, that we should think about probably cleaning that primary digester within a year, maybe two years max. Next summer will be six years on that primary digester that has been cleaned. So what I did, I talked with HydroClean, and they're usually up here once in a while. He's going to stop by and look at the digester, the site, access and stuff, and where they can dump at the ponds with the digester. And uh, we should probably think about getting that digester cleaned. And it'll be, like I said, it'll be six years. The last time we cleaned it was 2013. And once we go in and clean it again, that'll give us a good idea how many years we can go again. Maybe we can go eight years, I don't know. But it'd be something that we should really think about hard as cleaning that primary digester. If we don't do it next summer, we have to do it the following summer. So this will be the first but, time that we go in to clean it since the plant upgrade? So we don't know. We don't know how much sand is in there because of the new uh, bar screen in the grip removal system, how much it washes through. I know when we drop clarifiers that we do have some sand in the sumps and stuff once in a while that gets kind of washed through during high flows. Obviously this year it's been low, but the flows have been low, but we uh, have noticed that there's been sand in the clarifiers when we drop them and inspect all the scrapers and stuff. So we're not sure how much sand is in the digester and grit and sand. But this is probably what thirty thousand last time we did it. Yeah. It was a. It's was not it? a little yeah, price. Sure. It's twenty to forty grand, if I recall properly. So we'll see what the quotes come in at. Yeah. Uh, also, we did start. Uh, we do have our full staff back now, so we started some pump maintenance up the lake. The station that we have the bad piping in, we got in there, got a patch, got everything measured, everything's ordered up. So when we get our material, we'll. We'll take care of that as soon as we can. And uh, like I say, our full staff is back. And uh, there's maintenance that the electrician's doing now that we need to catch up on. And as far as summer help, they are done now. Summer help is done. Also, that line we're talking about, uh, you know, we did get a price from hydro cleaning for cleaning. Yeah, obviously it's got to be clean, you know, from the ponds to the 11th Street. We also got another bid from Bijou Sewer, and uh, their bid came in quite a bit higher than HydroClean. I brought him out there. He was in town in Bemidji, drove up here. We went out there. I walked through the whole line with them, 
by the ponds and stuff, and uh, we just got a bid back from them about a week or so ago, and they did come in quite a bit higher. Like three times higher. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm going to circle back with them and tell them that they're not even in the same ballpark. They're not even in the same town. No. Couldn't believe it. Uh, also, I did attend the Minnesota Wastewater Operators Association conference in July in uh, Grand Rapids. And that went real well. I attended the biosolids refresher course, so I got nine hours uh, biosolids refresher and uh, seven hours wastewater training hours. Uh, my understanding is that instead of nine hours, they're trying to get passed through that for biosolids refresher now, they want to go to six hours. And the reason is people can do it in one day, get the refresher hours for biosolids done in one day. One of the questions that was raised is, have, uh, is that going to save all the entities a lot of money? And that Sherry, uh, what, from the uh, with the biosolids, she says they ran all the numbers, and it's a tremendous savings for the communities to go to six hours training time instead of nine hours. You're talking lodging, meals, everything. They ran all the numbers, so they're trying to get that passed through to go to six hours refresher hours for biosolids, which would be nice. Same like we got two biosolids guys here that are licensed. You get a day, you can run up, two guys could go down and get that done in a day and have that done. Uh, also, we did, uh, we're watching our phosphorus and stuff. It's up a little bit right now, so we're, we're uh, adjusting our feed rates for our ferric and stuff, but we're still in compliance and we met all our effluent limits for the past month. But we watch that real close. And like I say, we are starting to do a little maintenance now on our lift stations and stuff. We got all our staff back and we're, we'll be able to get up and get some of these lift stations and stuff taken care of. And that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Is, the truck, is the truck sold now? Huh? Is the, the old truck sold? Sludge truck. Oh, the sludge truck? Yeah. 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 And that, I just talked to him again. I told him, when's he coming for it? He said he's going to come and get it. Okay. Yep. So this is a kind of an ongoing thorn in our side a little bit. He told us he was going to come at the end of July and get it. We never heard from him. It kind of keeps dragging on. So at some point, it's his company that does the sludge hauling for us. If that truck doesn't disappear, maybe by the time that we're done hauling sludge, we may need to bring it back to the board and see if we want to put it out for bids again. Well, he hasn't paid for it yet. He hasn't paid for it and he hasn't picked it up. I pushed him pretty hard the last time I talked to him. I told the board's get kind of disgusted with this thing sitting here yet. And, right, this has got to get paid for. And, and, I'd like to see it out of there. <laughs> yeah. So would we. I have a question on that. Yes. Um, sludge hauling. It's not, <coughs> when they haul it to the fields, it's, is it, Tilled in within a certain amount of time. No, it's not incorporated. So it's long the term. The fields story. are approved. The fields he hauls on have to be approved by the MPCA. You have to have them accepted. He applies for permits for certain areas. Sure. They're all permitted where he takes the sludge. Have we hauled the one out by Pallon before on no the property? No, that's so not approved yet. That's a long term story. It's considered long term storage because it's not tilled in within 24 no. hours or. No, that's not true. That uh, that's getting in review right now to be accepted All right. to haul biosolids on. We always haul on. We don't. They don't incorporate. And the reason is, it's you know the stubble and stuff. So they can haul on a zero to six percent slope on a field like that. Sure. If it's a if it's a you can are zero to two percent slope. If it's zero to six percent, you have to incorporate it within forty-eight hours. See, that's why they look at that. This Sherry, uh, what, wow. Sherry Bach, she'll look at that application. She'll look at the soil samples and the soil survey, and look at all the slopes and stuff, and how close you are to the river, your setback, <coughs> and she'll approve it or disapprove it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. But if it was all black and you incorporated within 48 hours, then the slope comes into effect. You can haul on a, big, on a more of a slope. They haul it, you know, we, they don't, we don't store the biosolids out there. Okay. They're spread. 
the MPCA has to review it. They got to review it, yep. Thank you. Director's report. <laughs> Um, so we talked about most of the stuff that I've been working on. Uh, also in front of you is the East Kujiching hours, which we briefly talked about. Um, I was surprised at how low the hours were this month to the point that we made the guys look again to make sure that it was right. Uh, it's been really quiet. There haven't been a lot of issues out there, and we kind of had a little bit of a lull with Island View construction with them looking through some things. So those hours have been low this month. Um, I would expect as houses and locations come online that those hours should ramp up a little bit. Um, looked at the hydraulic report a little bit from AE2S. Uh, there has been requests from board members, not only from me, but also from our engineer to try to get copies of that report. As I've indicated, it would be irresponsible for me to release that report because there are inconsistent statements in there. One of which is he made an assumption of a 100-year flood being a, a limiting event for us, when in, in actuality, um, talking with the MPCA, it's a 25-year event or a one-hour peak. So those are the types of things that I need to talk to him because there's a big difference between a 25-year event and a 100-year event. So I, I'm not comfortable releasing that report until it's completely right or until we are comfortable with the information in there. So. I think that's everything for this month. The East Cooch Board, uh, at our last meeting, wanted uh, a record kept of all maintenance costs for the Island View project so that we could possibly submit that back to the county for reimbursement. So We'll make sure that we modify that spreadsheet. <coughs> Yeah, I have one more question for Greg. I, I just looked at my notes. Now, when East Cooch comes fully on, is that going to bring up more lab work? Or is it going to stay about the same? Same. Same? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, you just mentioned SEH here in passing. Um, how, how do you feel about their work on the I&I? &I? AE2S? Pardon? AE2S, maybe? AE2S, yeah. Um, it's been a struggle at times with him. Um, he goes radio silent. We haven't needed a lot from him. Um, Mr. Overstar <coughs> is well experienced in this project, or in this type of project, so he's been able to provide probably more guidance than our engineer would. Um, as I indicated before, there are issues with this hydraulic report, just so the board is aware. We do have a $16,000 outstanding invoice with AE2S. When Scott Schaefer originally sent it to us, I told him I wasn't paying for it until that report was what it needed to be. Um, so that's still kind of my stance. AE2S obviously disagrees with that. So there is an urgency on my part to try to get that report done in addition to the board having requested that report. Um, the fact that I need to contact the MPCA to determine design standards for this type of project because he's not using the right ones, in my opinion, and from talking with the MPCA, it's a problem. Uh, now, do you think that we're getting close to where we should have a peer review of his study and maybe possibly find another engineer? So where we're at right now, now that we're back to full staff, I want to take some time with Greg and John to go through that report from an operator's perspective and from a technical perspective and make sure that what's written in that report makes sense. Once we do that, we can go back to him with changes and then assuming that he makes the appropriate changes, that, in our opinion, to that report and issues it again, um, then we can get to the point, if, if there's major projects out there that need to be done, definitely I think we need to have a peer review. Depending on what comes out in the wash as we go through this report, we'll see if it's worthwhile to do a peer review. Have they identified any problem areas, uh, for, like for the North Coach part of this? The biggest one that comes to mind, which is obviously the first bottleneck, is the pumps coming out of EQ. I think we, before we even had a hydraulic report taken care of, we recognized that that was our first bottleneck. We can only move so much out of EQ. Those pumps are rated for 1,000 gallons a minute. There's three of them. I think at max, we've seen 2,300 come out of there. 
So we're leaving some on the table with regards to those pumps. Um, the piping, the inlet piping on those pumps and the discharge piping, I don't know if it's designed the way it should be. I know that's something that AE2S is kind of questioning as well. Um, and he's also suggested that maybe we can use a different pumping station in that area to try to move through more from east or from EQ so that we don't have these discharges. So if we can alleviate that bottleneck, I, I challenged him to think, okay, if we've alleviated that, what comes next in the yeah. plant? Are we going to have hydraulic retention issues with the clarifiers? Are we going to only be able to pass so much through the, the trickling filters? Where's our next bottleneck? Um, well, we'd have the plenty uh, oversized, I know we put in an oversized pipe uh, from EQ out to the plant. I think, uh, what is it, um, 21 inch, it was previously, it was only about 16 inch pipe or something like that. 27, 27 inch pipe. Anyway, so, uh, you know, the, the problem is probably not in that section, it's in down towards uh, coming out of the he yeah, and he did outline some of the issues basically I think between the, the pressurized line from that comes out of EQ, like between the EQ pumps and where we tie into that line basically. If you go and look at it, and I'm sure you're familiar with it, there's a lot of 90 degree angles. We go, it's very small and then it goes up and then it goes down in diameter. It, it's really, in my experience, Unconventional configuration of yeah. the yeah. Is it possible, like, to put in a lift station dedic kind of dedicated uh, to uh, uh, what you call it there? I mean, it comes right in the EQ River mm -hmm. Riverview. Um, well, you look at that. One of the things that he's listed in his report is possibly, and I haven't talked to the guys yet about this, but possibly he mentioned that there is a station there that maybe we can convert that at times to be able to push more fluid through there before it actually gets EQ, if I recall how he's written that. So there's possibilities there. But like I said, once we get past that bottleneck, we're still probably going to have some level of bottleneck here. Yeah, yeah. So those are the things that we have to wade through what's feasible from their perspective and make sure that, I mean, he only spent a day here, so we need to make sure that he has a full understanding as to how on a normal basis that system is being run. So I'm still, hoping that we can get through this with them. But I, I don't think we should feel shy about firing them and hiring somebody else if we, you know. And so maybe if the, the, the information will transfer, we own that information, we pay for that, right? Right, and, well, not yet, but we will. Um, and like I said, before we do any major projects, piping or pumping or anything, I probably would get a peer review. And keep in mind that a lift station, if we put one in, it's probably in the $200,000 neighborhood, depending on how big. When we did the remodeling of the plant, did we ever get all the paperwork back from the engineering firm? So that's actually one of the <coughs> other problems that, that we're encountering with this hydraulic review, because what AE2S is doing is looking at the design drawings or, or what the end, the end excuse me, what the intent is from that project. We've never gotten the as-built. So they are trying to do the best with the limited information that we have. So with that in mind, every once in a while, I do poke WSN and ask them where we're at and, and remind them that if we need to, we will take uh, legal action to make sure that they carry forth on their um, commitment with that project. Well, Having said all that, he has issued within the past couple months some information that he really does owe us. It's Do we owe him any money? WSN? Yeah. No. We should well, have some money, yes. I thought we got the s bills for that. We never got the s No. We haven't got it Nor yet. did we get an O&M manual. Oh. So, that should have been here by now. That's how many years is it? Yeah, now? it's only four years over Four years, yeah. So, yes, I'm trying to work with him, Mike. I'd much rather try to work with him and get the information rather than make it ugly. <laughs> Did Gritter get supplied a copy of those as bills? It's an engineering thing. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> Anything else from the directors? No. Okay. New business. New business. I don't have anything on the agenda. New business. So we'll move on to correspondence. New correspondence for us today. 
Yeah, so as Steve look, was looking at before, our standard with statement in there, what we transferred for the past month into the WIF company. And just as a heads up to the budget committee, um, it's budget season, so we're, I need to get going on that, and we'll have our first reading of the budget in September's meeting, so don't be surprised if we have a budget committee meeting between now and then. You're going to set that up for us? Yep. Good. I see some new information in the uh, in the finance in the trade <coughs> report. That's kind of helpful, huh? Well, okay. I have a, I have a, yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's in the uh, findings and responses. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Corrective action plans and all that stuff at the end there. So yeah. keep in mind that you did approve the draft of this at the last yeah. meeting, and the only changes that should have been made from the draft. I haven't reviewed this because it just came yesterday, I think. Um, there was some wording around sick time, I think it was, that we had to change because he had old information in there. But other than that, I think everything should be exactly as you guys approved of the draft. Is he charging us more with uh, for this further, I mean, now that they're doing this further, this extra work? Uh, Truthfully, I think, um, I'm not sure what you mean by extra work, but I believe the first year that I was here, it cost more than the subsequent years. Oh. And I don't know if that's a, a loyalty type of discount or what, but every year I keep budgeting more than it comes in now. Okay, good. Because I think, and some of you that have been on the board a little bit longer, we didn't use this company for quite some time, right? They're fairly new to us, three or four years maybe, is that accurate? I think it's longer than that, right? Okay. So, next meeting will be Tuesday, September 18th at 7.30. Motion for adjournment? I'll make a motion. Seconded? Second. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.